What's going on people, it is Irish Gunner HD here, you can call me Irish, and today I'm doing my first look at Forza Horizon 3 on the PC. I basically thought I should start off with performance, because that's that's fairly important. As you might or as you may or may not know, the game is pretty pretty poor as far as optimization and performance goes. So if we look at it here, I'm playing it with a uh, frame rate unlocked variable, V-Sync off, motion blur, oh I had that on because I was testing something a minute ago, uh, and then show FPS on, frame rate smoothing off, and dy dynamic optimization off. For some reason, two once again, two times anti-anisotropic anti filtering, uh, then everything basically on medium and two times MSAA. Let's go out and see now just how this works. I'm drifting around in the car park, I'm following um, Miss Arrow HD on uh, his little section on this, on this car on this car park site. Notice the performance. The reason that it's interesting to me is that specifically on this section, the performance drops in the same place almost every time. It's right up here at the first turn and then about halfway through at about that spot again. The frame rate tanks inexplicably. It's really insane. So just check it out. And you've seen there, the frame rate stutter right as I pass the GTR is the second place. Right as you're coming through that power rally, as he called it in his video, the frame rate just drops atrocious to you. And it actually caused me to drop out of drift there. And that's not an excuse. Watch, again. Massive stutter. Right as you enter it, which is very off-putting. Huge, huge frame loss there. It's actually crazy. But yeah, that's like that's just a very that's a good repeatable example that I found out of of the performance ter um, being terrible. Now I watched the Digital Foundry video on the on the frame rate, and it was just bizarre. They found that on the 970, if you which is it, if you turn the free if you turn the frame rate VSync onto 30 FPS, or in my case 36, being that I have a 144 hertz monitor, and turn the motion blur on, so you basically get a console like performance. You can literally max out the game. You can literally max out the game as far as the as far as the render settings and the the MSA. You can go all the way up to eight times MSAA, and it doesn't it doesn't affect it. So if you watch now, you can see the frame rate. Okay, so the drifting was bad that time because I got distracted by that far barn find uh, notification. But you can see, so it looks terrible. Even here, when I pass that GTR, even with the frame rate smoothing on or with the V sync on, it still has the uh, it still has the stutter there. It's insane. But otherwise, it's a flawless 36 FPS. And I don't know if it's just me, but the drifting, the physics feel different. Like massive lag stutter there. Again, dropping me out of the drift. And there again. So yeah, as you can see there, that's the first few, uh, that's just, it's just, it's insane to me, it's crazy. And it's not just in this section, overall my performance has been from live withable to absolutely just unbearable. Um, it's just been really poor. And that's a shame, and I'm hoping that it's going to be fixed when the game fully launches. Uh, hopefully it's just some kind of early thing, like maybe there's a day one patch to come when it's released worldwide. I don't know. Yeah, that's the performance out of the way. Actually... The actual game is amazing. That's why I'm so disappointed in the performance. The game is fantastic. The physics feel great. They feel a lot like the old Horizon, the Horizon 1, uh, which was the last one that I played. Obviously, I don't have an Xbox One, so. I'll just go out and go cruise around for a bit. 
But yeah, the physics feel fantastic. Like, as far as a Forza game goes now, again, as I said, when it came to Forza 6 Apex, I will still be sticking to a set of Corsair for my 900 degree drifting because the 900 degrees just doesn't seem to really work. But overall, if you play it, if you're playing it on 360 rotation or 270 or whatever, if you're just kind of cruising around, doing a bit of drifting here and there, it's fine. It really does. It feels like the old one and it, like the shifter works, clutch pedal works. The only thing that blows my mind is, check this out, right? If I go into settings and go into controls, if I select wheel, it has the Logitech G920. There is no option to look back. It's not assigned and I can't, as far as I know, yeah, I can't edit it. I can't edit the the, the, um, the default Logitech 9, G920 settings. I can't edit them, so I can't look back. It's insane to me. Left and right is fine. They're on the they're on the sticks, but uh, or they're on the like the left and right buttons on the, on the front of the wheel. But like the look back button not assigned. Map button not assigned, horn button not assigned. I don't understand. Playground, what the hell? What like what on earth are you actually thinking? And yet if I try to create a custom wheel profile, there is wheel mapping required on a lot of these ones. I don't have enough buttons on my wheel. And they have to be assigned. Like I can't there's like certain things that have to be activated. Like wheel mapping required for online activate. But in the actual G920 software or the G920 um the G920's wheel mappings. Where is it? Online activate? Not assigned. Make that make sense of that for me, please. This, yeah, so like the game itself, if you just ignore all the outside bullshit, the game is fantastic. I might go to I might just go back to the auto show and just have a look at some of my cars. The game itself and the customization and stuff like that is fantastic. Really nice to see. My cars look like I have some amazing looking cars in here that I, well I I find amazing looking. But yeah, like the game itself, all the customization, like if I go back down to my S fifteen here, it's just Beautiful, like look at this S13 Corolla. Now, I will say the Corolla, the GTA or the A86 looks very, or the engine sounds are pretty not great, like they don't sound anything like them, uh, like the like the real 4AG. But uh, yeah, like the customization, everything's great. It's just that this horrible, horrible performance, like I'll just jump into this one and drive around a bit, uh, drive around a bit again. Yeah, the performance just is it's just real bad. I don't know what it is. I've tried everything, I've read everything, I've been to the Forza forums, I've been on Reddit, I've been on. Just random Google searches. Oh, look how pretty that is. So pretty. If I use my mouse, it works. Being able to look back. Uh, but yeah, so the, like the, just the performance issues, it's just insane. Like right now, I'm seeing that it's 60. I think you can see it here because it's not Shadow Plays Recorder. It's the actual in-game one. So let's just cruise around a bit and see if we notice anything, any major standout performance issues. So already we're down into 30 FPS. 50, 40, 36, 40. Like, whoa, 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 whoa. Massive stutter. Massive stutter out of nowhere. Like, and according to Digital Foundry's video, it's specifically 970s that have a lot of trouble, which I don't understand because they specify that the 970 is their minimum spec. So you would assume that they would, like, you'd assume that they would have worked on that card. Like, and had it, if anything, had it perfectly optimized for that card, but it's not. And that is just, I don't know. I don't know what to say. It's just, it seems insane to me. There, big massive lag spike. Knocked me out of the drift. As far as kind of, let's see, that's, I don't know. I, don't, I really want to talk about the rest of the game, but the performance is just crushes it so, crushes a lot of the enjoyment so much. But yeah, the photo mode is fantastic. Drone mode is great in theory. I just haven't found a reason to use it yet. Because there's no replay that I'm aware of yet, at least, um, like no replay camera. I don't know what the purpose of a drone mode is other than to maybe follow other NPC cars. Like, or like, I don't, pff, why, why would I use that? Like maybe online if you're with friends, like recording video stuff like that. But uh, yeah, that's just the drone mode is cool in theory. I just haven't found a reason for it. Photo mode again as ever is fantastic. Uh, I really love that the photo mode in all in the forest in, in all the forests has always been fantastic to me. Uh, the world map is pretty cool. I just, I think they've gone too far as far as just long roads go. Like, all of these just long roads, roads, roads. And it's only when you get to these kind of, like, the likes of Byron Bay or Surface Paradise, like, to the cities, that there's actually any kind of really cool drift-centric spots, like. And then other than that, like, the little car park that we started off in. Like, this construction site, it's great fun, but it's dirt. It's not ideal. A lot of these roads here, you can see, like, they are cool. Like, this little windy section I haven't visited yet, that's probably good. The airport section I've not been to, this looks interesting, but I haven't been there yet. But basically, basically this whole side of the map I haven't actually gotten to yet, so I probably shouldn't speak. This kind of canyon-esque mountain looking thing, I imagine that's pretty fun. But from my experience, the roads that I have traveled on, and you can see them here, the ones that are obviously in white, they're just a lot of long winding, like long straight motor stretches of highway or motorway, like this 
kind of duo motorway here. They're good, obviously they're great fun, but as far as like being a drifter, I obviously a big into drifting. It just feels like it's a lot of driving long, basically straight roads to get to anywhere that's even remotely fun for drifting. I like to see like if there's an expansion pass, maybe put like a drift, like a Nibisu style kind of drift, like motorland, sports land or something like that, like with different very like different tracks, or just kind of flesh out this part of, like these rocky canyons or something like that, like put some curvy rocky roads or like if you think of like the in Forza Horizon 1 they had the the top of the mountain like you could drive once like you, you turned off the, mo the the motorway and then you want, went off up into the canyon and then there was these like winding snaky canyon like canyon roads up to the up to the very top point uh, where there was a festival up the top there that was really cool if they were to implement something like that or even like a, a specific maybe that's what this is here but this looks like dirt to me so I don't know like a specific, again in Forza Horizon 1, the section that they had that was basically built for drifters as they called it, like the little kind of construction area at the very, at the north of the map. Although they said it was for drifters and then they put in a lot of dirt parts of that, of that track which actually blew my mind, I couldn't understand why they did that. It's like yeah, they all, like there's all of these dirt sections all over the rest of the map, why couldn't this just have been exclusively grip tarmac for, for drifting like, that is that very, very strange to me. But um, anyway, yeah, so that's the map, I like it a lot. Uh, but it could just use a little more kind of drift friendly spots but yeah so that's the map then the settings as far as the settings in general go they're fantastic the video options there's plenty there the again the advanced and stuff like that the controls are good if like in theory volume i would really like a master volume because even with my audio set to these low 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 volumes it's still incredibly loud like it's still very very loud let's see what else social all these features are cool the cars tuning cars being able to do that in a horizon game is fantastic because again the last time last the only Horizon I played was one, and that didn't have tuning, so it's great to be able to tune gears and stuff like that, and just get the the right height and stuff. All these like the, the amount of different stats of tracks is great as well for people that are like completionists and stuff. The auction house being in the game is great. All these kind of rivals, the community stuff, photos, vinyls, paints, all that kind of stuff. The one thing I don't like that they've done with Forza recently is when you buy a car or when you get like if you're buying a new car or entering a new car, it automatically takes you into like the vinyl storefront recommend list, and I'm just like I don't like that. I personally do not like that. I'm sure most a lot of people do for me personally it's just i i like the i know what color i'm going to pick or i don't know i'm going to mess around with it and if i want a livery that somebody's made i'll go and look for it myself because usually well they're not bad they're usually like just random abstract shape designs and stuff like that they're never like a livery of a race car or something like that that i that i actually like and would like to to mess with yeah so i'd like to have to, i'd like to be able to just go look at that myself rather than having a force on me and having to go through the ring roll of pressing like colors and then selecting color and having to like skip that like i would just like that menu to not be forced on you as you pick a new car then barn finds obviously are back the cars that i found so far are cool definitely the gtr is my favorite as you've seen i was in the start there that was a really cool surprise to see the the old racing kind of godzilla gtr then the wheel spins are fantastic actually i have none left at the minute to do them but the wheel spins are really great you can see how much credit's there i'd say about 600k of that is just from getting do uh, get, get getting real lucky and getting 100k spins and because i'm a vip i did the pre-order for the ultimate edition i it gets doubled my wheel spins get doubled basically and i get to i get 200k it's just really great so that was a really good idea the skill shop again these skills festival boss instant rewards all a very good idea the bucket list achievements are very fun like getting like specifically having the gtr drift one in that little car park was very fun the hsv malu drifting a couple of drift specific things which was great and then there's the marketplace there which is all obviously well and good so the game is the game is great the game is really really good or like it has the potential to be it's just that like can i can i play it like can i run can you have it run so I can actually play it. This car is a monster. It's got like 650 horsepower. It's actually the first. Oh, it's a Daigo's. Daigo's Mercilago. That's cool. See, that I do like. That mini I don't. Ew, that is hideous. But yeah, that's cool. Running into Daigo's Mercilago livery just out in the world. That's pretty awesome. But yeah, I was saying this car is like 650 horsepower. It's actually the first car I built. Like when you start the game and it gives you the choice of what car you want, I went with the S15, of course. And this is, this is this is basically the first one that I did. Now here's another thing. What just happened there reminded me of another major gripe I have with the Horizon series, and I'm amazed that they haven't, they still haven't implemented it in the in the third iteration. The ability to disable traffic. It's actually essential to me, in my opinion. Like the the, the traffic can absolutely ruin this game. On one hand, it's there's nothing quite like going into cockpit mode, cruising down the motorway at high speeds at night, weaving in and out of traffic with the headlights and stuff like that. That is amazing. Don't get me wrong. And like if you're going for just kind of like a cruise, pretending you're in a real car, sticking to the speed limit, and then overtaking the traffic and all, that's all great crack. But when I just want to drift, like all the, like this section here that like I can swing across. Transition. Now thankfully there's no traffic here. 
But that's not always the case. A lot of the times I'll be coming across and there'll be in a there'll be a traffic car in the opposite lane and it'll just take me out. That's not fun. Like that's not conducive to a good fun gameplay experience. So the option to disable it at the very least should be in there. Once again, big hitch, big frame rate stutter there. Brought me out of the drift. I'm not saying every time. Ooh, ooh, I leveled up. I can spin for a prize. I can show you the wheel spins. So if you haven't seen them, you can also win a car every single time. Oh, 5Gs. No, it's not, not a lot. But it's doubled with the VIP, so 10 grand. Not bad. I haven't broken a million yet, but I've been spending money more than I've been earning it a little bit lately. So I haven't broken a million in credits yet. But it's going to be soon, I can feel it. <laughs> but uh, yeah, guess I basically, I should wrap it up now since we're going on about 20 minutes. Well, again, I love the game. Nothing like having a Horizon and having a Forza game on the PC. It's actually incredible. It's just that the performance is just one of the, it's one of the weirdest, I won't say the worst, but it's definitely one of the weirdest performing games that there's been on the, on the, on the PC in a while. The fact that like some people can run it flawlessly on like four times MSAA. Ultra settings, also the score counters as you're drifting is great. I usually like like to drift for drifting sake, but like having the the little skills meter like t ticking away up there, knowing that you're gonna get rewarded with spins on the wheel spins and stuff like that is is great. But um, yeah, it's just it's such a weirdly performing game. It's not that it's bad. It's bad for me, unfortunately. It's bad for 970 users on, in general. It seems other people are reporting, as I said, having like not the best graphics cards, getting eight times MSAA full full settings everything and getting like a flawless 60 fps so i don't know it's weird no there we go an example of the traffic yeah so i'm gonna wrap it up there and go investigate that barn find so that's about it again i love the video or i love the game i'll probably do some kind of like other videos on it like car builds or will it, or the road less traveled or something like that maybe even a will it drift i don't know that's it that's my first initial impressions of uh, forza horizon 3 if you enjoyed it please do leave a thumbs up subscribe if you're new here thanks for watching and goodbye.